All right, Revelation chapter 9, you might recall that there are seven trumpets sounding, correct? So now we're at the fifth trumpet right here. In the fifth trumpet, as it sounds, the Bible talks about an angel coming down, and this angel opens up the bottomless pit. Now, what is very interesting is that where, I don't know if I mentioned too much about this, but there is demonic activity or disappearances or strange occurrences within the Bermuda Triangle. We've heard stories about that. That word pit in the Bible, bottomless pit, which is kind of interesting to me, if you were to kind of go across one of those lines around the world, and then it could hit across where Korah, Dathan, and Abiram fell into the pit, the Bible says. So I don't know how much of that is true, but also Sodom and Gomorrah, where it was rained with hell, fire, and brimstone, it wasn't too far away from there too. So it could be that the angel is opening up one of the portals of hell, so to speak. So this is why I draw water over here. And because, you might say, why is that? Because one of the deepest places in our world today is what? It's under the ocean. It's one of the deepest points. And the closest point, location that you're going to get to hell, is obviously under the ocean. So when you go over here, the angel's trying to open up the key to the bottomless pit. And then the Bible talks about where we kind of mention it, that there's fire and smoke coming out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, these insects come out, but they're not your regular type of locusts. The Bible talks about concerning these creatures, that they're very strange-looking creatures, actually. So if this is a strange creature to you, uh, it's because I'm trying to be biblically accurate, okay? <laughs> so let's take a look at this kind of creature in the Bible. Revelation chapter 9. So we already talked about verse 4. These creatures are not your regular locusts. Why? They don't eat up the vegetation. They don't eat up the nature here. So these locusts are obviously demonic locusts, demonic creatures. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. So then these locusts are not harming the earth's vegetation. They're harming people. And when they harm these people, notice the verse says, verse 5. So remember, I'm reading verse by verse, word by word. Yeah. That way you can understand plainly what the verse is saying. So I deliberately do this. That way people don't have an excuse that the Bible's too difficult to understand. If you get used to this kind of teaching that I'm doing, what's going to happen is it'll help you immensely yourself. You'll get a common sense gist on how to read your Bible and you'll be able to do it yourself. So that's why I love verse-by-verse -verse Bible studies because that's what helped me too. So I'm trying to help you, so don't lose opportunity. When I'm trying to explain a verse, pay attention. And not only that, you want to check me out too, right? Amen. You want to check me out if it's correct or not. Amen. So check out if the way that I explain it is as how the verse shows. To them, these demonic locusts, it was given. What were they given? That they should not kill them. They don't kill people but that they should be tormented five months. It's to torture the humans five months. That's how long the torments last. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. You ever been bitten by a scorpion before? Stung by a scorpion? When he striketh a man, just like how a scorpion strikes a man. So that's the pain they're going to feel. In those days, look at this, shall men seek death. Notice that the people are trying to die. That's how unbearable the pain is that these lost sinners want to die. But guess what? And shall not find it. They don't get death. And shall desire to die. These people will want to die and death will what? Shall flee from them. Death will run away from them. Imagine a lot of people trying to commit suicide, but it doesn't work. How about that? That's pretty crazy, right? Now think about this. Do you remember... The, four, the, the seals. So from here, it sounds like to me that the fourth seal, remember that there were seven seals. 
And then the fourth seal talked about death and hell, right? Their power was what? To take away life, to wipe out a lot of people. That was death and hell's power. If you recall, when we looked at the book of Isaiah, the people made a covenant with death and hell. Now think about this. Then what it sounds like to me is that this fourth seal is before this fifth trumpet. Because death's job was to give them death. Over here, this fifth trumpet, their job is that death flees away from them. So the fourth horseman, the death, has already passed. And then can you imagine the people who made a covenant with death and hell, they tried to bargain and seek death again. But then no matter what, Satan does not give it to them. But I made a covenant, a contract with you, Satan. No, it doesn't matter. You know why? He's a liar from the beginning. Yeah. A lot of people try to make a contract with the devil so that they can get power. And that's what's going to happen in the tribulation too. They make a covenant. Why? So that they can receive power. And guess what? Satan will always betray you. And if you're stuck into the occult, witchcraft, and it's some kind of tribal voodoo religion, I would tell you one thing. You better run away from that. All right? You are being deceived by Satan. He's lying to you that you receive power when you actually don't receive power. So notice that uh, the covenant does not work with them. Because you'll notice that verse 11, Satan betrays them. He's the king over these demonic locusts to torment and torture the people. Can you imagine that? You made a contract with this being who's the power of death, but then he betrays you. Okay, let's look at verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts. Now, this is what you want to see, the shape. What does the locust look like? Or like unto horses prepared unto battle. So that's why they're like this, and they'll have hoofs. They're like horses coming down. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. So then they're wearing crowns as well. Isn't that interesting? So over here, they're wearing crowns. And their faces were as the faces of men. Now notice right here that they have a male face, but then in verse 8, and they had the hair as the hair of women, but they have women hair. There's your transvestite, so to speak. Yeah, transgender. See that? You know what that is a sign of? Demonic demon possession. That's what that is. You have a strange spirit within you that even psychologists cannot deny that there's much mental instability, that they have to make a separate program just for those people. You know why? Because they're so used to, they are not thinking and acting in a way that God created them to be. So they violate what they were made to be biologically, and that makes, gives you a mental breakdown, obviously. Fluidity. Fluidity in my foot, it's more like breaking it. So... Here's another thing which is interesting, which you men and you women need to listen to. You'll notice that verse 8 says they had the hair as the hair of women. What does that mean? That means God knows there's a distinction with hair for men and hair for women. There's no such thing as a universal appearance. That's the reason why universal appearance, we've gotten to the phase now. It doesn't matter, matter if you're a man or a woman anymore. See that? It's gotten to that kind of a mess. So, there, what do you think the Bible means by the uh, hair as a hair of women? That's pretty obvious. You look at 1 Corinthians. You know what? Let's just go over there, okay? Bookmark here and look at 1 Corinthians 11. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So notice that long hair is for women, not for men. Let me repeat that again. Long hair is for women and not for men. That's a woman hair, and men's hair is supposed to be short hair. Oh, you're being traditional. You're being old-fashioned, conservative. Well, the Bible's more ancient than your conservative ways. It's more old than that. And I prefer the biblical way rather than today's modern era. You want to go by the most recent update, the modern trend? No wonder you're going to fall into demon possession over there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
You'll notice what the Bible says at verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. See that? Look at that. So long hair is for women, short hair for men. We live in a day and age where men want these long, pretty, curly hairs, and they pull up excuses that John Wesley had long hair, and Jesus had long hair, Samson had long hair, and et cetera, et cetera. And those people don't know that during the Old Testament time, that's what God demanded because they were supposed to be a peculiar, strange people. But in your New Testament, the Bible says you're supposed to have short hair. Okay. And by the way, we don't care how Wesley was. If you really care what Wesley's dressing was like, then uh, I would like to see why aren't you dressed up like a Puritan then, huh? Very weird, you know, very weird. Wesley's not our final authority. It's the word of God. 